So Rav Cardoza, you know, there are some religions who believe that ideally all people should convert and follow their religious practices and beliefs. So, for example, you know, if I was a Christian, I would hope that everyone would become Christian. And if I was a Muslim, I would hope that everyone would become a Muslim. But uh, if you read Halakha and just the Jewish tradition for thousands of years, um, Jewish law does not try and seek out converts. And, um, and although a non-Jew could convert, um, they're not obligated to convert in order to be righteous in God's eyes. Um, it's totally legitimate to stay a non-Jew. So I want to ask you, from a personal standpoint, you know, you did convert um, many, many years ago. And uh, so I want to ask you, you know, what would what would be a few reasons why a non-Jew would want to convert? Number one and number two, why would someone want to convert to a religion that doesn't tell them that they need them? Yes, this is a very interesting question, which I've been thinking about a lot. And I probably will start here from a perspective which you don't uh, expect but I think is very important. Um, I would actually say that the existence of the Jewish people is an emergency measurement by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, by God. Why? Because first of all, the Torah starts with non-Jews. Adam and Eve are not Jewish, Noah is not Jewish. The first Jew is Abraham, is Avram Avinu. And that says a lot, because what that could mean, and that's the way how I read it, is that speaking in human terms, uh, when we speak about God, which is in any way a problem, but there's no other way of doing it, is that God really had no intention to create the Jewish people but was forced into that when things got out of hand. The idea was to create a mankind which was a chosen mankind, not a chosen people. And that this mankind would live in the presence of God, would be God intoxicated, would live by the Sheva Mitzvot Shil Bene Noach, the seven laws of Noach, and perhaps a few more Mitzvot. And if they would have lived up to it, to that, then there was not at all any need for Jews to come into the picture. So, how did the Jews come into existence? They came into existence the moment that things got out of hand. It starts uh, really with Adam and Eve, but let's leave that aside and start with Noah. The days of the flood of Noah, that is a whole generation of evil people. They are not God intoxicated. They don't live by the standards, the moral, ethical, religious standards. And then later on, we have the second story of the Dor Haflaka, of the Tower of Babel, which is a different kind of uh, evil, if you want to use that word. And God now basically says to himself, again, all said in very human terms, eh, this can't continue like this. I have to rescue the operation and I need somebody to do that. And perhaps I need the people to do that. And then he calls in Abraham, Avram, and says to him, listen, you need to rescue this together with me. At that moment, the first Jew comes into existence. And then it becomes clear over the years that one Jew on his own, Abraham can't do that. There needs to be a tribe, there needs to be a family, there needs to be a nation. But that nation is only there because mankind needs to be put back in order again. And that is the ultimate goal of the Jewish people. The Jewish people are the people who need to inspire the rest of mankind to become God intoxicated, to become moral, to become religiously moral. And therefore, God now calls that nation into existence. But that is only an afterthought. It is not something which God had in mind from the very beginning. 
there would not have been any need for the Jewish people if everything would have gone fine and, uh, and well. So now there is the big question. What happens in a case that one day we, the Jews, manage to get mankind back in order again? That's really the moment when we outdo ourselves and where we make an end to ourselves. Because what then is the purpose of us to stay Jewish? And it may quite well be that in a messianic age, when perhaps something like that will happen, there is no longer any need for the Jews. And uh, there is a big question about, is there still a need for all the 613 commandments? And if you look in the Talmud, you see that there is a big, big discussion going on also in the Kabbalah, whether or not we continue to uh, keep these uh, commandments, to observe these commandments. Perhaps these commandments were only meant to give us, the Jews, enough inspiration and enough uh, God intoxication to be able to do this. After all, we are a very small nation and we are here busy with the totality of mankind. And therefore we need a lot of support and that support comes from the mitzvot, from the 613 commandments. It gives us a kick, let's put it like that, uh, to put it in human and modern terms. And therefore we are able to do that. But once our task has been done, there is no longer any need for the Jewish people and we can go back to the original plan of God and that not only uh, are we not needed, but the whole of mankind now becomes the chosen mankind. You may want to call that Jews, you may want to call it Gentiles, is no longer important. So I'm saying that the Jewish people as such are a bridge between the moment that things went out of hand till the moment that things are back in order again, that's the task of the Jewish people, and that's all what there is to it. Um, now, anybody, or saying, saying it a little different, so it is a rescue operation. The Jewish people's task is a rescue operation. Now, if there are non-Jews who say, I want to be part of the rescue operation, Mavakasha, come and join us. But there is no need for it, because if you live by the Sheva Mitzvot Shel B'nai Noach, and you are an ethical non-Jew, then really you are doing what God originally had intended to do that. But you want to become part of the rescue uh, cam, then okay, please come in. Uh, no obligation, only we remember one thing, once you're in, you can't get out anymore. It is a one-way show, which is in itself quite an issue, uh, which needs perhaps and also time uh, more discussion why that is. Why can't you not walk out when you can walk in? I've written in great lengths once about it in one of my uh, my books. Now, there is an also a dimension to it, and that is that, like in my case, where I have a Jewish father and a non-Jewish mother, so I am, as Rav Uziel says, Mizera Yisrael, from the seat of Israel, so there is a certain voice, Jewish voice, speaking within me, telling me, you better make sure that you belong to the rescuers in this situation. That's the way how I indeed feel about it. Coming along to that point, or coming to that point, I'm reminded of an observation by Emil Fackenheim, the famous professor of philosophy, who writes about what he calls root experiences. The Jews throughout 4,000 years have gone through a lot of root experiences, which got into our DNA. It made us different from others. And therefore, once you are in that root uh, experience and you have inherited from your parents and your grandparents, even when you are no longer religious, you still walk around with these root experiences. And therefore, it is not so easy to walk out because you can't walk out of your own skin. This is part of you. So therefore, if, you, if it is part of you, then even the atheistic Jew and who doesn't keep a thing and doesn't uh, observe any commandments, he still has this, what they call in Yiddish, the spintele yid in him, this little Jewishness in him, which keeps the fire going. And that is, I think, what if you would ask the secular Jew who's still aware that he's Jewish, would say, there is something about it which is so special and unique. I don't want to lose it even when I don't keep too many commandments or I don't keep any commandments. So I would say God is a pluralist. 
in other words, God is basically saying, listen, you don't have to become Jewish. Uh, there are many ways to God. And if that is Christianity or it is an also way, that's fine with me, as long as it does not involve the idol worship, let's say, and it is ethically uh, responsible, then you live your life the way you do. But I hope you will be intoxicated by my presence, feel my presence, and uh, in that way live your life. But if you want to join the Jewish people, mavakasha.